Hey teachers, if you're an upper elementary teacher, I am willing to bet that multiplication facts are something you struggle with on a near daily basis. Before moving over to the curriculum side of things, I taught fourth and fifth grade for many years and it never ceased to amaze me how just so many of my students struggled with their multiplication facts and these were skills that I had to work on almost every single day throughout a school year. And now, with so many of you moving to virtual, I know that teaching multiplication facts is becoming increasingly more difficult. I'm getting emails and messages quite often asking about how I teach multiplication facts virtually. And so in this video, what I want to do is I want to share five ways to teach your students their multiplication facts if you're teaching virtually this school year. Now, I've been working in the online education space for over five years now, and there are so many lessons I've learned throughout those years. And one thing that I think is scary for a lot of teachers, myself included, when I first moved over to online learning, is that it feels like we have to reinvent the wheel, like we have to completely teach skills and concepts in entirely new ways. But what I've learned over the years is this is not the case at all. The easiest thing you can do, and if you've watched a lot of my other videos here on this channel, like my ELA virtual lessons made easy, you've heard me say this before, but it is think about how you teach things in your classroom and then how you can translate, translate that into a virtual setting. Because a lot of times it's really easy. It's just a few minor tweaks or differences here or there. So what I encourage you to do is go ahead and make a list of all the ways you teach multiplication facts to your students and then think about what little tweaks or differences you can make so that you can use those same lessons and activities in a virtual setting. And as you're making that list, I've got five activities that you can add to it. The first activity I have for you are multiplication songs. And I'm willing to bet that if you're watching this right now, you probably are already using multiplication songs with your students, but these are something that are so simple to translate over to virtual learning. If you just have audio, you can upload those audio files to your LMS or Google Classroom or whatever you're using. Um, if you are teaching live, you can share your screen so that students can see videos of multiplication songs that you're using, and there are tons that you can choose from. Now, some of my favorites are the Schoolhouse Rock multiplication songs and the vocabulary multiplication songs. But if you're looking for some different ones to spice it up a little bit, um, all you have to do is search on YouTube or Teachers Pay Teachers, and there's tons of free and paid songs and videos created by teachers that you can find. Now, what I recommend that you do is that you use a multiplication song at the start of your math block every single day because music is a great way to wake your students up. And especially with virtual learning, it's important that we incorporate activities with movement and uh, with music and different things throughout the day that are kind of going to bring our students back again, make them a little bit more alert. So this is a great way to start your math block and it will get them reviewing those important multiplication facts every single day. Now the second activity I have for you are multiplication game websites. And this is one of the biggest questions that I get when it comes to teaching multiplication facts virtually is what are the best sites to use? And there are literally so many you can choose from. There's free ones, there's paid ones. I definitely have certain sites that I've gravitated towards over the years that I've liked with my learners, but I wanted to get a sense from a lot of teachers. What are most teachers using and finding to be most helpful? So I went into an upper elementary Facebook group that I'm a part of, and I asked thousands of teachers, what are your favorite multiplication game websites? And I wanna share those results with you. Now by far, the number one response I received was extra math. I probably saw this one come up three times more than I saw any other response. But some of the other ones that I did see come up a lot were multiplication.com, timestables.com, academics, and Freckle Math. And all of these sites that we've just listed here, these are either completely free or they have a large section of free games on the site. Now, the next one I wanna show you is Reflex Math, and this one is paid, but the reason I'm listing it here is because a lot of teachers posted that they were able to apply for a grant to get it for free, and the grant is very easy to complete. I actually went to the site and looked up the grant. It's not a whole lot of work, and you can get free access to that 
for your students. Now we all know that online games are something that students love, so it's a great way to keep them engaged. And it's also really easy for you because it's something that you can share with them. They can work on it independently while learning those important skills that they need. So what I recommend that you do is give your students 15 to 20 minutes per day to work on their multiplication facts by playing these online games. Now the next couple of activities that I have for you are games that you and your students can play together in a remote setting. So my third activity is an array scavenger hunt. And if you have followed my channel for long, you know that I love virtual scavenger hunts. I have another video that's linked down in the description with lots of ideas for virtual scavenger hunts that you can use with every subject you teach. But this activity is a little twist on those virtual scavenger hunts. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna call out a multiplication fact, such as three times three. And then you're gonna set a timer and your students have to get up from their seat, look around their house and find an object or a set of objects that they can use to create that array. And then they're gonna bring it back and they're gonna create their three by three array before time goes up. And when time is over, uh, you'll let students share what they created, talk about the total number of objects they use to create their, their array. There's lots of discussions that you can have with this, and it's also kind of funny to see what students come up uh, with to make their arrays. For example, they might come up with making an array out of wrapping bows like the one that I've created right here. The fourth multiplication activity I have for you are dice and card games, and I am guessing that you probably use dice and card games a lot at centers in your classroom. And a lot of these games can still be replicated and modified in certain ways so that you can use them virtually. For example, if you have a die or if you have a deck of cards in your home, you could flip two cards or roll the die twice and then have your students race on their side of the computer to write down the product and then hold it up to their camera and see who can get it the fastest. Or if you don't want it to be a race, just have them write it down and then tell students when to hold it up to the camera and you can see how many students got it correct. If you allow your students to use breakout rooms, something really fun you can do is allow them to play these sort of games in breakout rooms with each other. And you can still make this work even if your students do not have dice or a deck of cards in their home, uh, go to Google and search for a virtual dice roller and it will come up with one of those dice, those virtual dice that kind of spin and you click to stop it. You can share that with your students and they can use that to play their games if they don't actually have dice and cards in their homes. All right, now the fifth and final multiplication activity that I have for you is an easy one. It's a classic, but it's something that my students always get a lot out of and that is making multiplication tables. The great thing about this is all your students need is a piece of paper and a pencil and they can create their multiplication table. Now, even when I taught in the classroom, this was something that I had my students do at least once a week and sometimes more than once a week because I don't know how things work in the state where you teach, but here in Virginia, students always are given a piece of paper and a pencil to work with when they take their math standardized state test at the end of the year. And so I trained my students throughout the school year how to make these multiplication tables. And as soon as they got their piece of paper and pencil, when they went to take their standardized state test at the end of the year, they knew the first thing they were supposed to do was sit and make that multiplication table that they could then use to answer all of the questions because we know that there's so many questions on those tests and our students get really drained. So it prevents them from having to recall all that information because they've written it down and it's right in front of them to refer to throughout their entire test. So this is something that I have students practice all the time. Like I said, it's a classic, but it works really well. And if you want your students to maybe do it digitally or virtually, you could also have them create a multiplication table using Google Sheets. So there are five of my favorite virtual activities for teaching multiplication facts. And before we wrap up, I actually have a bonus activity for you. I am a big fan of using task cards with math whether having students use them individually or work in partners to do them. I think it's a great way to review concepts, to show students the way they're gonna see questions on standardized testing at the end of the year. And students seem to enjoy working on them as well. So I just wanna show you this set of multiplication and division task cards that I have in my store. They are linked in the description for this video, but the great thing about these is not only do you get a PDF set, 
but you also get a self-checking or self-grading set that students can access through Google Forms. So they're great for virtual teaching and they also cut down on grading time. So I just wanted to share those with you. So these are all the tips and strategies that I have for you today. And I'm sure that you have a lot that I haven't thought of. So if you've got any other great strategies or ways that you're teaching multiplication facts to your students virtually, please leave a comment below and let all of us know it's something that everyone can benefit from. And after you do that, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. When you do that, it definitely helps this channel to grow and it helps us to reach as many teachers as possible. It also makes you aware when we release our newest videos and resources and even free resources sometimes. So make sure to subscribe to this channel. And until next time, happy teaching.